Okay, so welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about returning from functions. All right, so certain functions such as int functions or string functions return a value instead of outputting it. The returned value can be used later in the code, for example, by getting assigned to a variable. To do this, uh, for your defined functions, you can use the return statement. And of course, the return statement cannot be used outside of the function definition. All right, so let me get into my sublime text and show you what I'm talking about. So in our previous lesson, we looked at this particular function, um, but today we're going to use a different function um, to try and use the return keyword. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and run this and see um, everything is working um, normally. All right, so we're going to define a function. I'm going to define an int function. So an int function is just going to be dealing with integers, you know, doing something to numbers. All right, so I'm going to call this add nums. All right, so I've just I've chosen this name because it's quite descriptive uh, of what my function will be doing. It's going to be adding numbers. So it's going to be adding two numbers. So inside here, I'll pass X and Y. Uh, these are arbitrary um, variables you could uh, pass in any names of your choice. So over here, I'm going to put in the colon and press enter. So uh, the body of this particular function is going to be demarcated by the indented line over here. So you can put multiple indented lines um, to denote um, the logic of the, that particular function. All right, so in this function, uh, initially I'm going to print x plus y obviously this is what i want i want to add these two numbers whatever numbers i'm going to pass in here i want them added and so after i finish you know defining my function i have to uh, get back to the beginning to the margin and then i'll call this function or invoke the function so i'm going to call add nums here and, and of course it takes two arguments so i'm going to pass in 20 and maybe 30 to start off and save and run this, you see down here, I have a 50 because these two numbers have been added. This is X and this is Y. So if I'm to duplicate this a couple of times and, you know, maybe add one here and then two here and see if this function is, you know, uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing. So we have 150, 120 plus 30 is 150 and 220 plus 30 is 250. So these are the this is the output for these cores respectively. All right, so um, yeah, it's behaving the way I want it to behave. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna do away with these two out the line. So the print will just output uh, whatever value we have to the console. It's not going to return it. Uh, what do I mean about that? So when something is returned, it can be stored in a variable, but when it's printed, you cannot store it in a variable. So let's see this. So let's say we want to store uh, the out, outcome of our function in a variable. So we call this function and assign it to a variable. So how are we going to do that? We just, you know, write down a variable. So I'm going to call it um, result. Uh, this is, again, um, an arbitrary name. You could name this variable anything. And so we want the result that comes out from this function to be um, assigned to this variable. So let's then print this variable down here. Uh, so for us to see exactly what is happening, I need to, let me assign this to an F string and say um, the outcome or the output is, and then uh, we then put in the result here inside these curly brackets. This is how you use the F string. Okay, so uh, let me save and try and run this. All right, so I want you guys to see what I have here. I have a 50, um, which is obviously the result of adding 20 plus 30. Um, and I also have this statement. So this second statement is um, this line over here, line 14. So where is this 50 coming from? This 50 is coming from line 13 because each time you are to call this function, obviously it's going to print out 
because it's printing out to the console. So over here, when I call the function, it printed out, uh, regardless of the fact that we are assigning this to a variable. And so that's what happened. And so we can see we have a result of none down here. We're supposed to get a result of 50, but we are getting a result of none. So what does none mean? Uh, none is assigned to a variable with no value. So this result has got no value, but rather we would have loved this uh, result to have a 50. You know, this is because we are printing out. Okay, so to solve this, we have to return this, right? So we can just re remove this and write return here. Uh, return is not a function. Um, you, you might not necessarily need the, these parentheses, but I will leave these parentheses but you don't necessarily need these parentheses. Okay, so if I'm to save this and run this one more time, now you can see uh, the 50 has been assigned to this result over here. So that's where you need the return keyword or the return statement. It allows you um, to store whatever output from a given function into a variable. It returns the value. That's what it simply does. Right, so this is what this statement is saying here. All right, so let's try and answer the question. Um, fill in the blanks to define a function that compares the lengths of its arguments and returns the shortest one. So define shortest string. X and Y are going to be strings. If length of X is, is less than or equal to the length. Here, we're gonna write length of Y, then we're going to return. Uh, or we are going to return again. Okay, so it's either we return X or return Y. Check it out and that's the correct answer. Right, so moving on, um, we're still looking at returning from function. So once you return a value from a function, it immediately stops being executed. So any code placed after the return statement won't be executed. So we can demonstrate this uh, if we go to our Sublime text. So what I'm going to do is let me print a statement here, which says I will be executed and then print another statement down here, which says um, I will not be executed. Okay, so I have two statements. The, the, the first one, I will be executed, and then the other one, I will not be executed. So we want to see if we try and run this, what will happen. So if I save and run, you will see down here, it prints this first one, I will be executed. However, it does not print the second one because of this return keyword. So what this return statement does, it does not only returns a value, it also terminates, uh, you know, the logic of the function. So these three lines are the logic of this uh, particular function. And so the moment it encounters the return keyword or the return statement, then, you know, it's gonna terminate that particular function. So the lines that comes after the return keyword or the return statement will not be executed, as you guys have said. If, however, I remove this line and place it above the return statement and save and run it one more time, you will see now I have, I'll be executed, I'll not be executed, and then it processes uh, uh, this uh, logic here. This is how the return keyword or the return statement works. Right, so let's try and uh, answer the last question. What's the highest number this function prints if called? So define numbers is the name of the function. So it's going to print one, print two, and return. Obviously, it's going to be two numbers. So, you know, these statements after the return keyword or the return statement will not be printed. So write two here and check out. Boom, that is the correct answer. Right, so in our next um, lesson, we're going to talk about comments and doc strings before we conclude uh, this mini course. Right, so I want to thank you for your time. Hope to see you in the next video. For now, I'm out. Bye-bye. Uh,